Hello, everyone. We are streaming from the studio here at uh, the Data Heroes Hub at Snowflake Summit. I am Francisco Catan, head of the open source program at Snowflake. And here with me is Matt Topol. He is a staff software engineer at Voltrum Data. How are you, Matt? I'm doing well. I'm having, I'm having a good time. Very cool. Hey, so I hear you are the author of the book on Apache Arrow. Yeah, I mean, there's it. just the one. Uh, so I was giving talks at a few conferences yeah. uh, for about Apache Arrow for a while. And then the company packed the publisher. They reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to write a book on Apache Arrow. So I decided to go for it. And it's been really well received. People really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's got humor to it. It's not dry read. This is really the important thing for a tech book. Very cool, very cool. Awesome, so share with our audience, for those of you that may not be aware, like, you know, so make sure we're all on the same page. What is Apache Arrow? So Apache Arrow is an open source project. It yeah. is a in-memory, column-oriented data format. Got it. Uh, the idea being that since it's the same in-memory representation, whether it's on the wire or in, the, in process, sitting across, you can send data back and forth without having to pay serialization or deserialization costs. Everything can talk the same language, no translations needed. But it's also extremely efficient to perform analytical operations on it. I see. So compared to, let's say, Parquet, that a lot of people are familiar with. Well, so Parquet is an on-disk format. Got it. So Parquet is compressed, there's encoding in there. The, the goal there is you want fast read, fast write from disk with Parquet. But once you get that data in the memory, you want to operate on it. Very cool. and you can't operate directly on the Parquet data because it's encoded and compressed. So one of the more common use cases is that you'll pull the data into memory as Arrow. Got it. From Parquet, because they're similar enough, they're both column oriented, so the conversion is very quick and can sometimes also be done without having to copy it at all. And then now you have a very efficient in-memory analytical format you can use. Makes a lot of sense. So I understand that Snowflake partnered with Voltron Data to improve our Python connector using yep. Nano Arrow. What yes. is that all about? So um, Snowflake's Python connector uh, uses PyArrow under the hood, which is the Python Arrow library. And that's because Snowflake's internal usage will send data in Arrow format to get benefits from the performance and the, the efficiency of sending the data. Um, the drawback there is that PyArrow is actually fairly large because the Python package for PyArrow Pi contains not just the implementation of the Arrow format, but it also contains a bunch of utilities and other tools and libraries for com computation, data set analysis, and there's a whole bunch of utilities and usages. And that means that the Snowflake Python connector ends up being very, very large, which in a resource constrained situation is a problem. What are examples of use cases that the new improved Nano Arrow based so, Python connector enables then? So Nano Arrow that we built um, is a small C library mm -hmm. that implements just the Arrow format. Yeah. It doesn't have all the extra stuff that Pi Arrow uses because Snowflake doesn't need it. You just need to be able to use read and write Arrow. And the big use case that that enables is AWS Lambda functions. Currently, with the Snowflake Python connector, uh, you can't deploy a AWS Lambda function that uses the Snowflake connector because the resulting image is too big. Snow AWS Lambda has a has a limit on how large your thing can your your image can be when it's not when it's unzipped, and Pi Arrow makes the Snowflake connector too big. But since Nano Arrow is this tiny vendorable C library, it's about 300 kilobytes after it's compiled it ends up being that now, with the Snowflake Python connector using Nano Arrow, you can deploy an AWS Lambda function that, that uses the Snowflake Python connector. Um, and it should go on preview in that actual result, yeah, actual release. Okay. So preview in July for the Python connector with Nano Arrow. Got it, so now you can write a Python function in AWS Lambda and call Snowflake. Easily with the connector, yeah. Right. What about for non-Python developers? I understand you also worked in an ADBC driver for Snowflake? Yep, so ADBC, yeah. uh, Arrow Database Connectivity. 
Um, if you're familiar with ODBC or JDBC, yeah. it's a similar concept. You have a single API that you can applications can code against, and they get arrow data back, column oriented. Um, and the benefit, the real benefit there is when you have something like Snowflake, which is a column oriented database. If you're using ODBC or JDBC, the data is coming back from the column oriented from Snowflake. Then you have to convert it and transpose to rows for ODBC and JDBC. Yeah. And then most analytical usages are just going to use it in columns anyways, so then they convert it back to columns. So with ADBC, you get to keep it as columns the whole way through. Got it. And so we, we developed a ADBC driver to support Snowflake. Because like ODBC and JDBC, you can swap out the drivers for ADBC. Yeah. Awesome. And does this also enable other use cases, perhaps writing in other languages other than? Yeah, so because ADBC is, it, it, it's a spec. Yeah. It, it's defined as a C header. Yeah. So any programming language that can call a C function can call the ADBC driver. It just, you know, we have an interface, we released it. You can download the built ones on GitHub. Um, there is already, we already have bindings for uh, C++, C, Python, Ruby, Golang, uh, R was the big one. Yeah, well, that yeah. Snowflake was very excited that we can enable R yeah. to call Snowflake that way. And there's also work being done, being contributed for C Sharp and Rust implementations of the bindings. Yeah. But even if you're not one of those languages, as long as you can call a C function, it works. So now even if there isn't a bespoke uh, connector for a specific language, such as R, for example, mm -hmm. or C++, you can now use the ADBC driver yep. to call Snowflake. And then you get arrow data back, so it stays column-oriented, efficient arrow the whole way through. Excellent. So tell our viewers how to get started with, uh, with the projects we talked about. So Nano Arrow, you can just go right around GitHub, github.com slash Apache slash Nano Arrow. Um, you know, it's, it's a small library, easy to download, easy to clone, build. And ADBC, same idea, github.com slash Apache slash arrow dash ADBC. Um, the releases have the built libraries. You can install it from Conda or, vari or various system package managers yeah. like, you know, Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, or Microsoft VC package. Uh, and you can just go to the documentation and learn more about it, uh, arrow.apache.org slash ADBC. Awesome. Hey, Matt, thanks for stopping by. And as always, if you're interested in building on Snowflake, find us on developers.snowflake.com.